You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. Black and White Network supporters, make sure you check out the Black and White Network merchandise store. Link in the description. Use promo code USA First, all one word. USA First, all one word. 25% off now. I'm back. Rudriance for our Black and White Sports 2. We're going to talk about this Matariza case. It's a case that's, look, it's going to have legs on this channel. I'm just telling you right now. Uh, somebody asked me, why, why are we still talking about this? Look, we made probably 150 Deshaun Watson videos. Um, frankly, it's because they're out viewing everything else like four to one. I mean, it's this is something, whether viewers realize it or not, this is something that is bringing more subs in. Um, it's getting the views. People are interested in this. Um, generally speaking, this is exactly the kind of thing that viewers are interested in. Um, I mean, I got a college football video coming. I get it, but um, it just is what it is. I mean, this is the kind of thing that people are interested in. It's uh, sports meets drama, plain and simple. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. Uh, that's me just being honest completely. Um, let's take a look at this because, you know, a couple of people have said uh, things to me about being more skeptical on this. Well, I can tell you, the accuser starting a media blitz will certainly get my skepticism level starting to rise. Because on an issue like we're talking about, this heinous, what is the point of doing a media blitz? Okay? CBS News, you went on there the other day. Okay. Some things came out of that. Some things that, that looked pretty heinous came out of that. But why are we turning around now and doing yet another interview? I, I don't like that. I can tell you right now. And yeah, that raises my skepticism. Doesn't mean what she's saying isn't true. It doesn't mean that. But now it, it does make me wonder, are there ulterior motives involving what's going on with this? I mean, truly, I don't get the media blitz. Teen accusing former Buffalo Bills punter of a heinous act. Yes, I'm cleaning this up for YouTube. Quote, everything about this is hard. I've got no, if this is true, I've got no doubts that it's hard. But why are you going on ABC Nightline now right after doing CBS News? I, I don't understand that. I don't. A teenager who is accused, uh, who has accused former Bills punter Matt Ariza in civil, a civil lawsuit of a heinous act at an off-campus Halloween party last year is speaking out about the alleged attack, saying her piercings were ripped from her body and she was left bloody and bruised. Ariza, who has not been criminally charged in connection with the allegations at this time, has proclaimed his innocence through his attorney. The standout rookie punter was let go by the Buffalo Bills this week after the lawsuit was filed against him. Now, look, I'm going to make this very clear. If this turns out to be proven false, then Matt Ariza and his family should sue the pants off this teenager. And I don't know if they can uh, try to hold... The parents liable as well, since she was a minor when this was supposedly t had, had taken place. I don't know, but you better believe he should nail everybody for defamation uh, on her side if this turns out to be false. I I'm just putting that out there. I mean, at some point, if something like this ends up being false, you've got to start holding people accountable that did the accusing the alleged victim whose identity has not been revealed told ABC's nightline. Here we go. That she was 17 years old when she w went to an off campus Halloween party at San Diego state university with some friends quote, Matt came up to me, started talking to me, flirting. He gave me a drink and then he led me over to a side yard. The teen who said she was heavily intoxicated told the news outlet. 
According to her account, Ariza, then 21 years old and, and a star college football player, asked her to perform oral pleasures on him and then turned her, turned her around and had sex with her from behind before leading her into a bedroom where two of his teammates identified it in the lawsuit as Xavier Leonard and Nowlin Iliwaku, I don't know, both 18 at the time, were already waiting. Quote, when I walked into that room and saw there were several guys already in there, I had a feeling that something bad was going to happen, and I expected it, she said. Once inside the bedroom, she alleged that she was violently blanked, asserting in the complaint that men took turns having sex with her from behind as she drifted in and out of consciousness. The teen told Nightline that she never gave consent and she had been screaming and crying. Huh. It doesn't say no either. You didn't say no? Yikes. During the encounter, she said her piercings were ripped out of her body and she was left bruised and bleeding. Quote, I feel like it should be clear to anybody that's not consensual sex. The teen said the attack left her costume and underwear covered in blood. Her friends took her home a short time later, and she reported the alleged incident to the police the next morning. That same day, she was taken to a hospital where they did perform a kit on her. Quote, everything about this has been hard, the alleged victim said, of the months that would follow. The San Diego police have completed their investigation and now handed the case over to the San Diego County District Attorney's Office, who will determine what criminal charges, if any, will be filed. Quote, the San Diego Police Department had submitted its investigation to our office. It's currently under review. Public Affairs Officer Tanya Sierra told Oxygen.com, quote, there's no timetable for how long it will take. The teen said she initially didn't know who her alleged attackers were, but detectives were able to piece it together through other witnesses who had been at the party. They also arranged for the teen to call Ariza and record the conversation under the pretense that she didn't remember what happened and she needed to know if they'd had sex and if she needed to be tested for STDs. Quote, he told me we had hooked up and he told me that I should get tested for chlamydia. Then I was told by my detectives to clarify what he meant by hook up. So I asked him if we had actual sex and his tone completely changed from that point. He told her they never had sex and abruptly ended the phone call at that point, she said. While the police continued to investigate the incident, Ariza was drafted by the Buffalo Bills in April and awarded a $4 million contract. The teen told, quote, Nightline when she heard the news, she started vomiting. I was really upset because I thought that I had been doing everything I was supposed to do in order to get them to face consequences. She said, I reported it right away, and I was giving all of my evidence to the authorities just to see him continuing on and thriving while I felt like my life was completely torn apart. She filed a lawsuit against all three men August 25th because she's just looking for closure, she's hopeful that criminal charges will be filed. I know this is something that's going to stick around forever, but I think that closure will help. I really do hope that I get it, said, she said. Two days after filing the suit, the Bills announced Ariza had been cut from the team. And it goes on to talk about the Bills statement. We've already covered that. Uh, by the way, Ariza's attorney issued a, 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 a rebuttal to the Nightline interview. Quote, it's a shame that this woman continues to issue incorrect and false statements regarding my client, Matt Ariza. I am not going to try this case in the press as, a, as her civil attorney attempt, is to, attempting to do. But needless to say, I have several witnesses who refute most of what she has alleged in the civil lawsuit. He said Ariza looks forward to defending his case, whether it be in civil court, criminal court, or both. It does go on to talk about uh, what I made a video about the other day involving the parents and the fact that they've been canceled, which isn't right. I mean, his parents 
should not be drug into this, but that's how this goes. And she's she's not helping the matter far as the parents go in the fact that she's going on TV and making this very public. Right? Um, wow. Wow. I really kind of had come to one sort of, not even a conclusion, but I was kind of leaning in one direction on this. I've got to be honest with you. I've pulled back from that now. Um, I don't know where this is going to go. It sounds like, and this is just my opinion, it sounds like something happened. Okay, we don't know what. But I'm starting to wonder, you know, uh, how she's categorizing events versus what did happen. The fact that she never comes right out here and says that she blatantly said no or that she attempted to run by, back out of the room. Um, I've got to say, you know, it makes me wonder if you'd have turned around and ran out. I mean, would these men have really chased you and pulled you back in the room? Um, you know, and maybe they would have. We don't know. But the thing that disturbs me in all this when it comes to her is the media tour. I don't like that at all. That raises red flags. I guess that is to put pressure on his attorney and him, but I think that makes her look bad. I truly do, okay? You know, Deshaun Watson's, uh, the a couple of women that finally did go to the press and talk, it was a long time into the process. Okay, before they decided to, uh, and even just a couple of three of those, one of them that hasn't still hasn't dropped her lawsuit. Uh, I mean, she's going to go to the bitter end with Deshaun Watson. Um, man, I, I don't know. I don't know what to think now. You know, there's some things that lead you to believe that something heinous might have taken place again. She didn't wait. She did go to the cops immediately, you know. She, they did send her to the hospital. They did do a kit. I would assume enough came out of that that the police, the detectives, w did get him to, it looks like they're saying the police got him to admit to some kind of an act because he said, yeah, you need to get tested for chlamydia. Yikes. This is, we don't know who's innocent, who's guilty in this. We don't know exactly what happened. Wow. Wow. Um, I, again, I don't understand the going public side of this to the extent that she has. We knew we knew this was going to get out, okay? Once the lawsuit was filed and the media saw the lawsuit, then it went public. NFL player, Buffalo Bills release him. Yeah, that stuff's going to be public. She goes on CBS News. Okay, some stuff comes out there. But now, here you are on Nightline. I don't like this media blitz tour shit. To me, it hurts the accuser, and it hurts their credibility, in my opinion, because then you do start raising the flag of, you know, is somebody trying to make a name? Are you trying to get a paycheck out of this now? I know. Oh, my God. Believe all women. Well, you know, after Johnny Depp and Amber Heard... People have got to take a step back, all right? Um, wow, I just... And, and look, she may be completely telling the truth, but I think it's a bad look going to the media in this way. I really do. I mean, once you gave one, okay, I can sort of let that slide, even though I think it should have been kept private. But now, you two days later, you go on Nightline? Yeah, I don't like that at all. I don't know. Tell me. If I'm crazy, I'm crazy. It is what it is. If you're interested in this case, I would definitely hit subscribe. We're going to follow this. Uh, for the folks that don't like these videos on this, I don't know what to tell you. Because, they're, like I said, they're getting about four to one views over everything else. This is going to be a big story on this channel. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.